Bonjour, hello. I'm very, uh, very happy, very pleased. I think we had a great opportunity to show to Canadians our policies, and that was my goal tonight. So I'm ready to answer your questions. Je suis prêt à répondre à vos questions. Bonsoir, Monsieur Bernier, euh, l'INADIP de la presse canadienne. Oui, Bernier, l'INADIP de la presse canadienne. Cette confrontation entre vous et Monsieur Scheer, en avez-vous eu assez pour votre argent? This was supposed to be a confrontation between you and Scheer. Do you think you got your money's worth? Are you happy with your exchanges with Mr. Scheer? Yes, I'm really happy. We had the opportunity to talk about real things and uh, to talk about our platform. I was able to show Canadians that the Popular Party is different from the other parties that were present. We have policies intended to make sure that we have a smaller government in Ottawa that respects our constitution. But I also showed that Mr. Scheer and Mr. Trudeau will not balance the budget, and it looks really bad for the future of Canada. What did you learn tonight in terms of the form of the debate or the substance of it that will help you on Thursday? I liked it. Uh, it was a bit stressful initially, and I think that's okay. That's Normal. But to me, it was a great experience. I was waiting for this moment, as I told you, and I'm very happy that we were able to take part in this debate. I, this experience, well, I, I use this opportunity to talk about uh, public policies, and uh, I think I'm, I was one of the rare leaders to discuss our election program without attacking the other leaders too much, and I think that's important to me. Hi, uh, Kian Bexty, Rebel News, right oh, here. Sorry, yeah. uh, my question revolves around uh, journalism in Canada. Three journalists came to this uh, debate tonight, uh, but they weren't going to be let in, myself included. We had to apply for an emergency court injunction to be allowed to cover the one English debate that our Prime Minister took part in. What does that say about the state of journalism in Canada and the contempt that the Prime Minister currently has for journalists? It's a shame, you know, uh, we're a free democracy, we believe in freedom, and it's too bad that uh, what happened right now. Uh, it's the same thing for me on the stage, you know, uh, Mr. Singh said that uh, I didn't have my place over there because of what I'm saying about immigration. But actually, you know, I'm a voice for the big majority of Canadians that want fewer immigrants. And the fact that some people doesn't want us to debate, and some people uh, don't want you also to be here. Uh, it's not a Canadian way, and I hope that uh, you'll be able to uh, be treated like, uh, like a journalist. Th thank you, I appreciate that. And my follow-up revolves around what you were saying. 6% of Canadians want higher Im immigration. That's what the data says. Yeah. Do you think that the other leaders just think that Canadians need to take some tough medicine, or do they just not believe the data? Well, first of all, I think that they don't want to agree with Canadians. Uh, I think they don't want to do that debate. You saw that on stage. Uh, you know, they were all against me on that. But actually, uh, that's a, a position that it is uh, in line with Canadians. But the most important also, if you want to preserve that country, if you want that country to be like that in 25 years, that's the time to have that discussion. And I'm very proud that I was able to have that discussion. Monsieur Bernier, Philippe Vincent Foisy de Radio-Canada. Oui. Philippe Vincent Foisy de Radio-Canada. Monsieur Trudeau states that basically tonight, you are saying publicly what Mr. Andrew Scheer is thinking. Uh, so, do you agree with uh, Mr. Trudeau that you were really the more conservative voice? Well, firstly, I put the question to Mr. Scheer. And I told him at the end of the debate that to me, Mr. Scheer is actually a liberal. And not a conservative. So Mr. Scheer and Mr. Trudeau, to me, they both uh, the same pol they represent the same policies. They, 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 they feel the same way about immigration, about not balancing the budget, and the foreign aid, and many other policies. I like to say that people who really believe in the free market and in, in, in smaller government in Ottawa, well, the People's Party of Canada actually should be representing them. Tonight, 
right, if you had to choose, would you have preferred to be leader of the Conservative Party rather than the leader of the People's Party? No, I am very happy where I am. We built a party in less than a year, and there are many people here who were doubtful about our ability to be there and to be a national party, but that's what we are. And I seize this opportunity to thank all our volunteers across Canada who enabled us to be here tonight. To me, it's my happiest moment in politics because we're doing politics differently. We have no taboos. We tell it like it is. We tell you what we think. And we're not trying to please everybody. That's the big difference between the People's Party and the other parties. André uh, Lajoie. wondering, uh, what do you think about the climate changes? As you know, we've been having a lots of floods in Quebec, Ontario. Are uh, you speaking about the weather? Yeah. <laughs> You're not speaking about the climate. Well, so you have a question on the climate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the climate is always changing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't have any problem with that. The normality for the climate is changing. So what I'm saying, I don't believe that the main reason for that is the uh, human activity on this planet. Uh, it is not uh, the, the main uh, reason why the climate is changing. There's a lot of other factors. So what you're saying about uh, what happened right now, uh, it's, the, it's the weather. And that's why I'm the only leader who uh, does not believe in these uh, climate change uh, hysteria or climate change emergency. We, all these people, want uh, Canadians to change their way of life and they don't want us to have a debate about uh, climate change. We need to have a debate and, you know, uh, it, it is uh, too important for the future of this country. So I want, uh, I want to impose Canadians on climate change. I want to impose uh, costly regulation on Canadians. And as you know, the environment is a shared jurisdiction. So provinces can uh, have policy on climate change. But like I said in the debate, we must have concrete actions for the environment. And that was that it is what I propose, concrete action for the environment. Be sure that we have a clear lakes, clear levers, and, and, uh, and, and put more money there than on fighting on climate change. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bernier, uh, Tom Perry with CBC News. There was a lot of people talking over each other tonight, a lot of uh, loud exchanges. Do you think that you were able to change anybody's mind tonight uh, in this debate? Well, I think so. I think so. People had an opportunity to uh, see me and opportunity to listen to our platform. And like I said in French, I was the only leader to speak about policies and, and not trying always to uh, uh, being negative with the other leaders. My position was, and, and my thinking before the debate, was for me to explain our platform. And I think I had the opportunity to do that. Your platform is obviously setting you quite far apart. From absolutely, the absolutely. You can. I think you saw that we are the only principal alternative, and we're doing politics differently than the other established political parties. Well, one person's principal alternative, I suppose, is another person's fringe party. So where do you think you stand there? Oh, sorry, can you? Uh, do you think you're a fringe party with your stance no. on the environment, with your stance on, no. on, cl on climate and immigration? Where do you, do you think that makes you a fringe party? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know. When you have the majority of Canadians on your side on immigration, when you have the majority of Canadians that want fewer immigrants, you are not radical. That's the other political parties that are radical because only 6% of the population want more immigration. So why do you think you had people up there like Mr. Singh saying you shouldn't even be there? Sorry? Mr. Singh said you shouldn't even be there. Yeah, I, I think, you know, like I told him during the debate, uh, we're in a free country. We have the right of our opinions. And, you know, Mr. Singh said always that is for freedom and, and, and for respect. So I was a little bit surprised that, you know, he didn't want to hear what we have to say. He wants to be the leader of this country. He wants to be the leader of democratic country. So I think he must respect free speech and our freedom. It's not because that I'm having a different point of view that I, I'm not supposed to be there. That's why I'm supposed to be there, because I'm having a different point of view. That's, that's debating, and I was there to do that, and I did it. So I'm very happy with that. Yeah. 
Mr. Bernier, Andrew Lawton from True North. You have talked about the need to prioritize economic immigrants and immigrants that share Canadian values yeah. because that's the way to integrate immigrants into Canada. You've also talked about the need to cut immigration numbers. Yeah. Why do you need to cut the numbers if the immigrants you're bringing in are, by your own metric of success, better suited for integration? Yeah, first of all, as you know, we want to uh, be sure that we'll have people that will come here and share our Canadian values. But the most important, it is easier for a, a new Canadian to uh, be part of our society when they have a job, and it's easier for that person to integrate our society. So right now, we will, I think we're having 328,000 newcomers a year. We want to have fewer immigrants, 150,000 a year, that will be the maximum. But the most important, not 26% of them must be economic immigrants, a person that is coming here because we need uh, their skill. So we need to increase that ratio, that proportion. And my proposal is to have at least 50% of our newcomers, they must be economic immigrants. They must come here because we need that person to be able to uh, fulfill uh, our economic needs. How do you propose to either mandate or screen for Canadian values? First of all, you know, we need to have a face-to-face -face interview uh, with each one of them, and we'll have that. And second, yes, uh, uh, we'll have some questions about their values, and I think that's uh, normal to do that. Uh, we want people who share our Canadian values. We want people who believe in, in freedom, in free markets, in the uh, equality between men and women, equality, uh, uh, equality before the law, the separation of uh, state and religious. So, yeah, let's have a discussion with them. And that's why we are proposing uh, an interview where we will ask these kind of questions. Thank you. Merci. Merci.